All right, so the first step to make yourself look big is to film yourself in front of a green screen or a blue screen. Just be sure not to wear any clothes the same color as the screen, of course. So for this effect, I storyboarded two shots, one of me walking just with my legs, and then the other shot of me kneeling down and looking at the Ferris wheel cabin. So I set up my camera and I did a lot of different takes because I wasn't quite sure which one would work out. So in Premiere Pro, I imported my favorite takes here, of the part when I'm walking very slow. And you can see the green screen isn't perfect. There's a lot of shadow taking place, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to deal with that later on. And here's the second best take here of me kneeling down and looking and then winking to the camera. Before we use the ultra key effect to remove the green screen, remember we first need to find our stock footage that we're going to composite it onto. And my favorite place to find high quality footage is Artlist. Using the Artlist library extension inside of Premiere Pro, I can search for footage right here. So let's search for Ferris wheel. And what I really love here is that I can go to filters and I can search by shot type. And I wanna choose tripod because I want the shot to be still so that way I don't have to do any tracking. And immediately I saw this first shot and I thought it would be perfect for when I go down and look at the cabin. So let's select this and let's download it. And beneath this, you can see that there are other shots in the collection that'll work too. For example, this shot I think will be great. Let's go ahead and download this one. It'll be perfect for the shot when I walk into the scene, but we need to expand this shot with Photoshop and then also use Artlist Image to Video Generator to turn it back into a video, but more on that in a moment. Next, I think it would be great to have an establishing shot, and I think this close-up here would be great for that. And what's really cool is you can download as much as you want from the Artlist library extension for music, footage, sound effects, and their AI voiceover, all with an Artlist subscription. So I'm just gonna type in something here, select my voice, emotion, the gender, and generate. Use my link below in the description to get two extra months free when you sign up for an annual plan. Thanks Artlist for sponsoring. There we go. And also something new, Artlist now has voice cloning, but you have to do that from the website version of Artlist. You just record a short sample, upload it, and it will clone your voice. So this gives you more control on the voices that you have and it saves you time. For example, if you mess up in the recording and you don't find out till the edit, instead of re-recording, you can have your editors type in what they want you to say and generate. This voice clone is brought to you by Artlist. All right, so I have the shots here inside of my timeline. Now for this shot, I need more room for me to walk in. So what I'm gonna do is go to the beginning of the clip and select this icon here to export this as an image. After you choose a name and the location, hit okay. So before we expand, we need to get rid of these black lines because I don't want them to appear in the expansion or in the new video generation. Now there's a couple ways that you can do it. You can use generative fill using the selection tool, but I find sometimes it just doesn't work. So another thing that you can do is use the clone stamp tool. So you can go over here to clone stamp and what you can do is control click to adjust the brush size. So let's say about here is good. So what I'm gonna do is press uh, option and click to create a clone stamp and then just click over this line. And you can see that this is gonna take some time, right? But wait a minute, this is taking too long. There has to be an easier way in 2025 to do this. And there is. If you go to Artlist and go to AI image and video and go to image to image, we can upload this exported still from our video and we can type in, remove those black diagonal lines, generate. And just like that, it's done. And we can upscale it to make it a higher resolution. So now let's download this and bring it back into Photoshop. Now that it's gone, we can do our expansion. Let's click on the crop tool here and you wanna make sure that it's kept at the original ratio. And then we can just drag a corner and drag out until we get the expansion that we want. So I want it to be a little bit more, so I have more room. Remember, I need my legs walking here, so I want enough space for me to walk in. So before we hit done, hit generative expand. And you don't need to type anything, just click generate. All right, this one added a cloud here at the bottom. It looks nice, but I don't think that's realistic. This one's nice as well as this one, but there's something here going on. You can also regenerate again if you need to, but let's select this one. All right, this looks good, so let's go ahead and file, export, 
as a JPEG. And now back to our list AI image and video. Now let's select the video icon. Of course, you can generate video just from text using text to video. But in this case, we're going to use image to video. And let's select that export we just made press open and it's going to give you a suggested prompt to use. In my experience, I find that if you focus on the action that you want it to do and keep it simple, it performs the best. So what do I want it to do? I want to make the Ferris wheel rotate slowly counterclockwise. Still shot on a tripod. So now we can play around with the settings. You can see that there's light, which is fast and efficient. Then there's standard, which has a little bit more enhanced realism. And now new, they have VO3 Pro, which is cinematic quality with audio and precise prompt control, which is ideal for high-end productions. The higher model you choose, of course, the more credits it will take. So I wanna show you the results with the Pro VO3. And let's also add um, some notes for the audio. Carnival background ambience. And let's change it to 1080p and animate. After some testing, when I added the carnival background ambience, it actually took that as a visual cue. And so the result was this. It sounded like a carnival, but it actually pans down to reveal a carnival, which is cool, but it's not exactly what I wanted. Let me show you. So that's not what I wanted. So what I did is I removed the carnival background ambience here and I got this result. The background ambience is okay, but we don't have to use it because remember we can take advantage of Artlist sound effects library here. And if you need more resolution, you can also upscale it to 4K. So this result is exactly what I wanted. It followed my instructions of going counterclockwise and it's a higher resolution. When I did the light or the standard, sometimes it would go the opposite direction or it wouldn't quite follow my instructions. So with VO3, it more correctly follows your instructions. So here I have the original video clip that's not expanded. And this is our new generation that I can pull in. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this here and drag it to meet the original duration and just plop it down to replace it. I'm not gonna use the audio from the clip here because we're gonna be doing sound design later on. So on video layer two, I've added my two green screenshots. Now for this shot, obviously we don't need me in the center, we need to pull this over. And we can also scale me up. So now it's in the right place. Now we need to do some chroma keying and some masking to get this to work. So first of all, let's go to effects and let's search for ultra key and let's double click to apply it. So first of all, use the dropper tool to select a darker area. The darker you go, the better it will be because it will also include the light. So let's use this dark area here and it doesn't look great. So what we can do is change this to aggressive, first of all, still not great. And now we can go to alpha channel and this will show us a better representation of what we need. For a good key, the foreground needs to be white, completely white, and the background needs to be completely black, which means transparent. So this gray stuff, no, no, no. We don't like that at all. And also we need to create a mask around this area because it's not the green screen, it's just that edge with the black bit. Let's go over here and let's use the opacity controls to create a mask here to just crop out, click and hold to make it a curve, and then click here, here, to close that off. And now we need to invert it. And now it works. So now we need to fix it so the black is transparent. So we're gonna go to the matte generation and go to highlight. And as we increase the highlight, it gets brighter, right? We wanna reduce that so it gets more black, so about 3.6 is good. It's still not perfect here, but we can play around with these controls to help make our mat more clean. So I had to adjust my mask a little bit here, but this is looking pretty good. So now we can go back to composite, and you can see there's a little bit of green spill happening in my legs. So let's go down to spill suppression, and if we increase the spill, it goes away slightly. See when it's zero, it's more green. When I increase that, it goes away. But we can do some more color correction. Okay, so now we can go to the Lumetri color panel and let's go to color wheels and match. And let's open up comparison view. And here what I wanna do is I actually want the reference image to be just this image. So I'm going to duplicate this just for this, the sake of this. And I want the reference 
to be just this shot without my legs. And then I want to select my green screen footage and I want to apply the same color from the reference to my green screen clip. So we're going to click on apply match. And this is going to take the same colors from the reference and apply it to my legs. So you can see it's not perfect, but it's getting there. So now let's go to curves and let's go to hue versus hue. And I'm going to select kind of this color here where it's still a little bit green. And I'm going to increase this color slightly. This is the before and this is the after. So this was color correction, right? But we still need to do some color grading to make it look more cohesive. The first step to this is to add some film grain to my green screen clip so that way it blends better with the background. So Artlist also has a plugin with a bunch of effects that you can install directly into the effects panel. And one of them is film grain. So let's go ahead and drag this on our clip. This comes with your subscription, which is great. So let's go ahead and go to effect controls and you can go down to film grain here. And let me just zoom in here so you can see what I'm talking about. See how it adds this kind of grain to the image to make it blend in more. You can adjust the grain size. We don't want it to be too much because then it's not going to match our background. So let's keep it at 35, but let's reduce our grain strength to about 10. I think that looks okay. And we can copy this command C or control C and paste it to our background clip. So it also matches. All right. So I have both clips here keyed out and color matched the best I can, but I think adding a cine style color grade will help here. So let's go to the project panel and let's right click and let's create an adjustment layer. And let's go to effects and let's go to cine style. This is another artless color grading tool, which is awesome. And let's drag and drop this onto our adjustment layer. And this also added a letter box. So let's go to effect controls and we can play around with these different presets here. You can also play around with the S curve to create more contrast. You can choose to have the letter box on and off and you can adjust the vignetting. So I made some adjustments to cine style. I reduced the exposure a bit and this is the result that I got. Another thing that I want to do is I want it to look a little bit more retro. Um, so this could work for some of you, but I want to add more of a yellow tone. So let's go to effects here and tone coloring is one of the other effects that I like to use here. So let's drag and drop this and let's go to effect controls and let's change it to a strong yellow tone. And this makes it look more kind of retro style. So you can play around um, with these different tone presets that it comes with olive green, sky blue, light yellow, or strong yellow, for example. So the next thing I want to do is each time I step, I want the ground to shake. For that, I'm going to use an effect from my gal toolkit. All right. So from effects, let's go to hard shake effect. And you can see there's different shakes to choose from. So let's double click to apply hard shake zero one. Let's ungroup this and we only need one. So let's go to effect controls and you can see that we're giving these different shakes to choose from. So we can get rid of the second one here and we want the hard shake to be below our adjustment layer because when it shakes, it also shakes the letter box, which we don't want. Let's bring this up and we can bring them down together. We can extend out the hard shake to the end here. And then what we can do is we can match these moments of shaking to when I stomp. So we can delete any of these shakes to make them shorter and then we can move them in alignment when I step. So for the first step right here and let's move this shake over. Then for the next step here, move this shake over. So after playing around with it and moving some of the shakes around, I have a shake in the beginning, a shake here, and a shake here transitioning to the next scene, which actually looks really cool because the shake starts here and it shakes over top this second clip as well. And remember that like manually keyframing this, you can do this on your own. Like see how these are all keyframes here. So it goes like it just transforms the position between all these different points here, but that takes a lot of time. And that's why we made this into a preset. So here we have a little bit of an issue here, right? There's some shadow happening on the green screen that we couldn't fix. And I want to slow myself down so it looks more realistic because I'm bigger, I'll be moving slower. So what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to nest this. And nesting will allow us to create a mask 
on this layer. So I can use the pen tool to create a mask on this part, which we don't want to be there, and then we can keyframe it, right? And increase the feathering. So then we can set a keyframe on the mask path, and as it goes forward, oh, we need to invert it, of course, too. Invert. And as it goes forward and I come down, we need to click on the mask and animate this off. It's gonna be very quick, so it's something like that. And then of course here we need it to go completely off. So it's gonna be something like that. So that way that shadow is not there. So now I'm gonna use the rate stretch tool to slow this down. So that way I move a little bit slower and it looks more realistic, right? So now sound design. I use the artless library sound effects to search for heavy footsteps. And I like this one. So I'm gonna download this and let's search for some carnival ambience. I like this. This works, let's download that. And I think some screams would do well. So let's search amusement park here. This will work, so let's go ahead and download it. So I added some final changes to my color grade because I didn't like it to be quite as yellow and I added all of the sound that I downloaded here, the footsteps, the ambience, a little wink sound effect at the end, and some amusement park ride screams. And here's the final result. So from this video, you learned how to plan out a big effect, choose stock video clips, chroma key, and also use AI generation tools from Artlist to help bring it to life. And by the way, once again, thanks to Artlist for sponsoring, and you can use my link below to sign up for an annual plan and you'll get two extra months free. If you wanna download and see my final timeline with all the effects, you can join my Patreon. And you can click right over here to learn more awesome effects. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye.